I want to apply this particular transformation equation. Y is equal to negative X plus 4 squared plus 3. My transformation. You have to be able to identify which uh, terms affect your X coordinates and which terms affect my Y coordinates. I know right away that the reflection and the positive 3 affect my Y coordinates. So my Y coordinates are all going to be multiplied by negative 1. Let me do it in a different color. Multiplied by negative 1. And then I have to add 3 to my Y coordinates. So that means that 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 plus 3. 1 becomes negative 1 plus 3. 0, 0 plus 3. 1 becomes negative 1 plus 3. And 4 becomes negative 4 plus 3. Those will generate my new Y coordinates. For my X coordinates, I have to only do one thing to my X coordinates. Because this is actually a shift to the left by 4, I have to take my X coordinates and subtract 4 from all of my X coordinates. So this becomes negative 2 minus 4, negative 1 minus 4, 0 minus 4, 1 minus 4, and 2 minus 4. And if you are able to identify the correct instructions for each transformation, my new transformed x and y coordinates are going to be negative 6. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 5. Negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2. Negative 4 and positive 3. Negative 3 and positive 2, and negative 2, negative 1. And if you plot those points, you will have the new transformed graph. Yes, William? From the transformation equation. Remember, every single transformation had an instruction? No, I just solved these, the, each of these. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. You have to, these are, these are what affect, what's in green affects the X coordinates, and over here that's what affects the Y coordinates. This is what you're going to have to do for every single question on the test center test. So it's really, really important. Whenever you have a table in your unit guide, don't skip it. You have to do it in order to do well on the test. So inverse functions are a key component of your grade 12 functions course, as well as the calculus course. And these three steps on the side, they are essential to finding inverse functions. So I'm going to start off with a very easy example. I'll give you a couple of seconds to copy this down. Also, inverse functions, because you're going to see it in your textbook, they're always defined as f negative 1 of x, f negative 1 of x. I'm going to put this back on the board, so, so don't worry too much about the definition. Okay, so whenever you have an inverse function, your first step is going to replace, be replace f of x with y, because the definition of f of x f of x is equal to y. So I'm going to replace that. y is equal to 2x minus 4. Now because we are switching the input and the output, you've got to take your y value, you've got to take your x value, and you're interchanging it. So instead of y is equal to 2x minus 4, I have x is equal to 2 y minus 4. So basically what I've done is I've switched my x and my y values. We're completely switching. All the x coordinates now become y coordinates. All the y coordinates now become x coordinates. And now we have to kind of isolate the y and solve for y. So I'm going to isolate my 2y on one side. 2y is equal to 
Move everything over to the other side, x plus 4. 2y is equal to x plus 4. If we divide everything by 2, we can isolate for y. So my final answer, x over 2 plus 4 over 2 is equal to y. Because y represents the inverse function, I'm going to rewrite this as f negative 1 over, uh, sorry, f negative 1 of x. This means the inverse. And I know x over 2 is the same as 1 half x. 4 divided by 2 is positive 2. So my equation, this is my equation of the inverse function. 1 half x plus 2 is equal to the inverse. One more very, very quick example because I want to draw a diagram with it. It's the exact same process. However, let's start with the quadratic function. So I, if I have f of x is equal to x squared plus 2, I promise this is the very last example. This is my y, this is my x. I want to draw my graph. X squared plus 2 would look like this. And it would start at positive 2. So I'm going to write positive 2. The sketch is really important. So I'm going to rewrite this question as Y is equal to X squared plus 2. Y is equal to X squared plus 2. That's my step number 1. My step number 2 is take my X take my y and we're going to interchange. Instead of y, I now have x. Instead of x, I now have y. y squared. Instead of x squared, it becomes y squared. I'm going to isolate my y squared and move everything else over to the other side. So y squared is equal to x plus 2. Uh, sorry, no, x minus 2 because I'm moving the positive 2 over to the other side. Now, how do I move from y squared to just y by itself? What do I have to do to both sides to get to y squared by itself? Yes, you've got to take the square root of both sides. And when I take the square root, I'm going to have a plus minus root x minus 2. So that means my inverse function f negative 1 of x is going to be equal to positive square root of x minus 2 and the negative square root of x minus 2. This is going to represent the graph of my inverse function. The next step, I you don't have to draw, but I want you to watch what I'm doing. If you plug the first equation into your graphing calculator, you're going to see that at negative 2, the graph is going to look like this, and it's going to keep going forever and ever and ever. If I plot my second equation, so the first, the top part is my first equation. If I plot my second equation into my graphing calculator, you're going to get the opposite, the kind of reflected version. So at negative 2, the graph is going to look like this. So what you're going to find is inverse functions have always kind of been reflected through the line y is equal to x. It's a reflection through the line of y is equal to x. Also, before you go, one last thing to notice, y is equal to x squared is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Whenever I draw a vertical line through that graph, it passes. It only crosses the graph uh, at one point. What happens when I draw a vertical line through the inverse function? What do you notice? Yeah, it cuts the graph at two points. That means the inverse function is not actually a function. It's just the inverse graph. So just because a function is a function, it doesn't mean that its inverse is also going to be a function. And that's a question that's going to come up on the test. So make sure you know your answer.